I guess this is my life now. <sighs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the rabbit hole. I had a lot of people ask me to talk about this Naturium drama in the skincare community. Apparently, it is the week of drama for the skincare world. Do you guys remember when it was just a community about skincare and the science behind it? Do you guys remember that? Hmm. I've decided to go ahead and do my makeup while I talk about this situation, get ready with me style video. If you're not interested in the makeup, don't worry. I will have all information about the makeup at the end of the video. So in case you are, you can stay to the end. And by the way, if anybody is curious about the bright blue tea that I am currently drinking, I actually woke up this morning with really red eyes. I do deal with allergies, so sorry if you can see that. Uh, jokes on my entire life since I'm allergic to allergy meds, so I thought I would try a more herbal remedy from this Clitoria Ternacea tea. Uh, admittedly, I could choose to call it Butterfly Pea, which is a, a much more common name for this, but given the choice between those two, I'm just saying. As far as the tea that is not blue, <laughs> I'm such a dad. For being a woman, I'm such a dad. But anyway, this Notorium situation, oh man, this is... This is like nothing I've ever seen before. I guess I have to give you a quick backstory just in case you don't know. So a YouTuber by the name of Susan Yara, who runs the YouTube channel Mixed Makeup, apparently announced on Sunday that she is the owner of a brand that she has been discussing on her channel as if it was a brand that she simply got in PR, just something where she had a code for it. Coincidentally, uh, this brand was sent out to several influencers who apparently had no idea that she was the owner. And I, I guess for whatever reason, I guess she thought that this would go over well. It, it is not. It is really not going over well. I'll link you guys the video. I'm actually surprised at the amount of negative comments. I, I thought somebody would be deleting them, but they're actually all there. You can see for yourselves that people are very unhappy with this. And the reason that her subscribers and fans are upset with this, or at least some of them, is because, you know, by, by pretending that it wasn't her brand, she wasn't being honest. A lot of people are saying this is probably illegal, according to the FTC, which it's very, it's just so unheard of that I'm not really sure this has been an individual case yet. I don't think anybody has ever been like, oh yeah, I own this brand that I've been pretending I don't own. Something I noticed is that for as many people as are upset, there's still quite a few people who don't understand what the big deal is. And I would say the uh, Caroline Hirons did a really good Instagram live discussing her opinions and her conclusions. She, she thinks this is illegal. It's very hard for me to say that. I just don't have enough experience to tell you if what she did is illegal or not. Uh, but according to Carolyn, it is. And something that was even a, a bigger deal to Carolyn is how this impacts the perception of influencers. I've noticed that to a lot of people, the idea of being an influencer is kind of icky. You know, I think that there's already a negative stigma against influencers. And since Caroline Hirons has been doing this for so long, of course, she's like, oh, great, this is just going to make it worse. And I think she might have a good point. To just be completely honest with you guys, I don't really watch a lot of skincare YouTube. I'm kind of, you know, busy reading studies and I do want to make sure I watch the channels that basically are my friends. So I got to be honest that I didn't know that much about Susan Yara. I knew that she did a couple of reaction videos uh, and that's basically it. That's basically where my knowledge ended. But since Sunday, I was like, okay, if I'm going to talk about this, I got to at least know a little bit about her. And one of the videos I found, one that a lot of people were saying to watch in, in the threads of these videos, was a video that she did on vitamin C. In this video, she does showcase one of the products from Naturium, which is, of course, her brand. Uh, but this is the time frame in which she had not yet presented this. And I'm just truly floored at her comfort level in sitting there behind the camera and not telling her viewers that it's her brand. You know, she's just kind of very casual about it. Oh, I really like this. I can't believe how well it worked out for me. And there's even a part in that video where she says, 
honestly, and I feel like if you're gonna use the word honestly, it should probably be in the context of a completely honest statement. Am I asking too much? Is that too much? God, I've come to hate the word honestly. You hear that word half the time, it means that you're about to hear something that is dishonest. But I started to have some other questions after watching that, and one of my main questions is, was she ever actually planning on telling us, or was this going to be just her secret brand all along? And that question makes me wonder, are other influencers doing this? Are there brands out there that actually belong to other influencers, but they just haven't told us? Because let me tell you what, that would be the easiest way to not have any trouble with the FTC is to just uh, absolutely never disclose that. This is actually really quite similar to my thoughts on the Sunday Riley situation. I feel like any time that dishonesty presents itself, it makes us question absolutely everything. If there is one lie, what else is a lie? And on this note, I want to talk a little about the difference between deception and outright lying because I think this is I think this is one of the big reasons why people are still giving her a, a pass, why some people don't think this is a big deal at all. You know, you, you could make an argument that what she did wasn't a blatant lie, and in fact that's her, her supposed reasoning. She wants us to believe that the reason she didn't tell us for three or four months that this was her brand is because she didn't want her influence to impact anybody's perception of these products. She wanted an unbiased review of these, right? Of unbiased opinions. But the problem is, that is still pure deception. Is it a blatant lie? I mean, I think it is. And if somebody can so comfortably deceive, can they also so comfortably just tell basic lies? Yeah, I absolutely love this product that today's video is sponsored by. She wants us to interpret this admitted deception as something that is supposed to be cute or endearing or just, oh, aha, uh -huh, she didn't want to tell anybody about her brand because she didn't want anyone to feel influenced. That's adorable. But the thing is, that is still deception. You admitted that you were dishonest. I'm sorry, but to me, that means you lied to your subscribers. I'm just not a fan of this idea of calling things by a different name than what they really are. Call things what they are. Dishonesty is lying. And something I learned years ago from a bad relationship is that if somebody is a liar, they are probably a liar in more aspects than one. You know, people are either honest or they're dishonest. And again, to me, if she could be so comfortable sitting there pretending that it wasn't her product in that vitamin C video, I'm getting mad and I'm beating my eyelids too hard. <laughs> but that is seriously, that is just so incredibly troublesome. That is not cute. I just shaved my face off camera. I feel like that should be the new just did my brows off camera. I feel like something that I've seen people arguing over is whether she should be reported to the FTC or not. Uh, to be honest with you, I think, she, I think this should be reviewed by the FTC. That might be a pretty bold claim to make, but I, I do think it should be. I think that that is fair. I think it's, it's a questionable situation. Let the FTC decide how they're going to handle it. You know, otherwise, if we, if we don't, if we act like this is okay, then how many more times is it going to happen? And to be honest with you guys, I think it's just a matter of time before the uh, FTC does crack down on this. You know, it happened in UK. All of the UK influencers got in trouble for not disclosing properly. But let me tell you what, in the US, nobody discloses. It blows my mind. My God, you guys do this for a living. Why can't you get it right? Disclosure in every single video if you're using products that were gifted to you or are sponsored. This is not difficult. And remember, too, remember what the FTC did when Sunday Riley had their drama. It's not like Sunday Riley ended as a brand. So you guys that, you know, that like the brand. See, that's the thing. I know a lot of people do like the Naturium brand. It's not going to end in the brand's uh, destruction. 
One more thing I want to make sure I comment on in this video is I have seen a lot of people saying, oh, I, I wonder what the influencers that took the sponsorships for Naturium will be doing, like what statements that they will put out. And I do think it is very possible that you will not see any statements whatsoever from them because depending on the contract that they signed for that sponsorship, they may not be able to say anything without putting themselves in jeopardy of a lawsuit. You know, in general, you are certainly allowed to express your opinion. But the thing is, if you signed a contract that you wouldn't say anything negative about the brand, then you kind of can't say your opinion. But again, that does depend on the contract that they signed. You know, we don't know. We don't know what they signed. But I would not be surprised if they are not able to say anything. And, and I also think that's an extra level of shady because she's kind of making them look bad if they can't speak up, but they can't speak up if they signed a contract that they won't say anything negative about the brand. It's really quite a catch-22 there. Susan? I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I felt like in that video that Susan herself posted, it kind of seemed like Leah in particular was not happy. Did, did you pick up on that or was it just me or am I imagining things? I don't know. It just kind of seemed like she, if any of the three of them would have known to, I think it would have been her since she uh, has worked the longest in the industry. So I promised to wrap up on the makeup. Let's go ahead and do that. So the eyeshadow palette that I was using was kind of Ofra's glitch palette combined with other matte shadows, combined with probably the other Glitch 2000 palette. I ordered the other one and it too is not a good representation of these shadows because they all, they all pop out. They all are removable. You can use something more advanced than a barbecue skewer, but that is what I have. I've been talking about how great this design is since Ofra sent me whatever the bigger palette's name was. They sent me that one and I realized, oh, this is a, an incredible design because it really holds the eyeshadows in place. So you'll be able to travel with it better than just a Z palette where your shadows could get knocked around. But in addition to that, I can make my own color schemes on the daily. I absolutely love it. I do have a bone to pick with every person who has left a review on these palettes who says there's not enough mattes. We'll pull out a couple shades and put some mattes in. Because yeah, the palettes themselves are just all shimmers. And, and on the topic of these shimmers, so I will tell you, they swatch very differently from the way that they apply. Uh, boom. There you go. Yeah, so that looks really, really intense, but as you saw me apply them, I think they're much more buildable. But personally, I absolutely love them. I love the fact that these are themed more in the 90s, the early 2000s. I love that. I mean, you can tell. Uh, I also used the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism blush palette. Oh, you guys, this one is so nice. He did such a good job of picking colors because I went through my entire collection trying to find dupes for every one of these shades, and I don't have a single one of these elsewhere in my collection. The only one that was close was Soleil, the shimmer shade, but I use the mattes more anyway. The ones I'm wearing today are Stargaze and Pink Moon. I just kind of layer them so you get a multi-dimensional look. The bronzer is a little bit too deep for me, so I used my Lancome one instead. I used a lot of MAC products today because I did do that 7 for $63 deal, which was still phenomenal. How many of you guys were able to, to buy in that sale? Uh, the products I used today were the Double Gleam Extra Dimension Skin Finish, which is a beautiful highlighter. The... Prep and Prime Transparent Finishing Powder, which is surprisingly not too, um, not giving too much of a white cast. And then the Waterweight SPF 30 Foundation. I bought the shade NC15 because I thought NC20 is getting to be too deep for me, especially in the year 2020. But NC15 is too light, so I tried to deepen it today. I don't think I chose wisely in the foundation I mixed it with, so 
we'll have to keep playing around with it, but it's a nice foundation otherwise. Definitely more lightweight, SPF 30. It contains only octanoxate for a chemical filter, which is the one chemical filter that I can use. This is from my NOLA Skin Essentials order, the Soothing Primer Oil. They did such a good job of formulating this. I finished off my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Oil, and this just seemed like the perfect repurchase. I only bought the Try Me size, but this Try Me size was, I think, $6.50, and it's a half ounce. But what I like so much about this is that rather than uh, lighten the argan oil that is in here with capric caprylic triglyceride, which is derived from coconut and can be a problem for a lot of people, instead they used aloe in here. It's a beautiful formulation. You can read the ingredients, it's really short. Uh, I'll have links to everything in the description box below. I also used the Tartiest Double Take Eyeliner, which I've heard a lot about. First time trying it today, so I'll have to see how it wears. But I got this from Macy's. They had uh, this holiday set marked down to $10. And I thought it was only gonna be a deluxe size, but it's, it's the full size in here. Plus it came with lashes and it came with a lash applicator for $10. The LA Girl Shockwave Neon Eyeliner is what's under my eye. What the, this is drugstore? This is so good. You could fool people with this. You could, you could change the label somehow, except you couldn't because it's actually part of it, but you could convince people this is high end. It is that good. Uh, the Maybelline Snap Scare, I'm wearing this because with my eyes being sensitive, I wanted to make sure I grabbed a mascara that's easy to remove. I actually contemplated lashes, but no, no, not today. Not when we're dealing with allergies. Not a good idea. This one, this one comes off so easily. Not the most high impact mascara, but really easy to remove. Great for sensitive eyes. And then the Milk Glitter Lip Gloss. I don't know if they still make this, but I always love, I always love glittery lip glosses. I just love them. So that's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you okay with this whole situation or are you upset or are you filing an FTC complaint? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.